Okay, guys, here we go. Due to the huge interest on my previous video and all the questions mainly about the process of uh, shipping this Land Cruiser from UAE into the United States, I decided to share my experience with you guys and hopefully you can find it helpful. Before I go through the um, process and the documents, let me answer a few questions that I get frequently asked. Is it legal to ship a car from UAE? Yes. The easiest way is if the vehicle is 25 years old or more. Do they have rust issues in UAE? Yes and no. For the most part, rust is not an issue, but in some parts it could be especially if you're buying a vehicle that is 25 years old or more you have to do your due diligence if you're buying sight and scene unseen like i did you gotta ask for lot lots of uh, pictures videos just to make sure but i would say it's not a common thing for example if you're buying a vehicle from new york or michigan that lived there for 10 15 years you know for sure this vehicle gonna have some rust issues this is not the case in UAE but I'm not an expert I lived there for six years back then I was not into older cars all the cars that I had were newer where you don't even think about trust so do your due diligence do I have to be there to arrange shipping no you don't have to be there to arrange shipping and very soon here I'll explain the process why should I buy one from there and go through all the hassle that's a great question in my case the reason I bought this one from there one because of the rear AC the US spec one did not come with the rear AC I used to have US spec one 1994 that didn't have AC in the back and if you know anything about these vehicles, they generate a lot of heat, especially in summer, you can feel it in the cabin area. So my kids would be complaining in the back that they're hot or they don't have AC, all that. So this is one of the things. Two, um, the Gulf Spec one came with the hood ornament. I like the look of it. Three, this one has a, um, a fridge center console and ice maker. Four, this has what they call the ambulance doors, uh, barn doors, whatever you call it. I prefer these doors uh, versus the, uh, the upper and lower hatch. And the fifth one and the most important is the um, factory sub tank. This cruiser came from the factory with two fuel tanks. The main one that holds, uh, I believe, 25 gallons and the sub tank that holds uh, 15 gallons. And that's one of the reason where you have the uh, tire carrier on the back so they can, they can fit in the, uh, the sub tank underneath. When did I buy this cruiser? I bought this cruiser in March 2022, but I did not receive it here in the States until July 2022. That means it took about four months to get here. Besides the things I just mentioned, it's pretty much the same vehicle as the ones that we got here in, in the US. It is left-hand drive, same uh, engine and transmission. I bought this cruiser in March 2022, but I did not get it here in the US until July 2022. Overall process and shipping took about four months. Now let's get into the process and the documents of buying and shipping one from UAE into the United States. First, how did I find the vehicle? I found the vehicle on Dubizel. Dubizel is like Greg List here uh, in, in the United States. 
I sent a message to the uh, to the seller, and it turned out the seller was a dealership owner, used cars dealership. I was talking to the salesperson first, and then I found out that this vehicle is owned by the owner of the of the dealership. So it was his personal vehicle. I asked him a few questions about it. A uh, few technical questions and I knew that the salesperson doesn't know much about these vehicles I insisted to talk to the owner so I got the owner's uh, phone number and we started communicating via whatsapp he was a local when I say local he was an Emirati and this vehicle was registered under his name so he was using it he sent me all the pictures I asked for, the videos, answered all my questions. Um, we negotiated the price and everything. And before we did the transaction, uh, I have a cousin that still lives in UAE. He doesn't know much about cars, but I just wanted him to go there and have a look, make sure this is legit. Um, it's in good condition. Just take it for uh, take it for a spin. See if there's any weird noises, anything that looks out of place. So my cousin did that for me, and he gave me his feedback that everything looks fine. Nothing, um, nothing looks wrong or out of place. After that, we proceeded with, with the transaction. Since he owns the dealership. He knows about uh, the uh, the import process, import and export. So I did a direct deposit to his uh, to his business. That's how I paid him. So I bought this vehicle sight unseen. Only thing is, my cousin went there in person and had to look at it just to make sure everything looks right. Sight unseen. After completing the transaction, we started here with the with the process of shipping the vehicle into the US. First thing you need, or before I talk about the documents, the second step after you find your vehicle, make the transaction, pay for it, maybe at the same time, you're gonna do your research and find the shipping company. This is very important. Same as I did with the sale transaction, I did everything else myself. I did my research and I came across Leader Relocations. This is the name of the company. And by the way, I'm gonna include everything in the description below, uh, all the documents you need and some information about the process and the steps. I found Leader Relocations. They are based in, uh, in Dubai. Um, I got a quote from them. It was, the quote was for around $3,200 back in 2022. And that did not include insurance. Then I thought it would be a good idea to have insurance just in case something happens, you never know. On top of that, I had to add about $550 for insurance. That insurance does not cover cosmetics and small things and things only covers total loss. If something would have to happen to the uh, vehicle, catches fire, uh, gets flooded, whatever, this is where the uh, insurance comes in place. And based on the value that, they, that you want to insure or the, you want to declare, your insurance uh, is gonna go up. So if you say that your vehicle is worth uh, $60,000, $70,000, you're gonna pay about $600, $700, $800, something like that. So it's based on the value of the vehicle you are shipping. And very important is to get insurance. Once everything is uh, finalized and ag agreed on with the shipping company, you would need to provide these documents to them in order to start the shipping process. One passport copy of the buyer and seller 
valid vehicle registration copy under the owner's name vehicle 3 vehicle export certificate in the name of the buyer this is something that the seller was familiar with since he owned the dealership so he knew about uh, this vehicle export cert certificate I don't think uh, it's difficult for any seller to um, to obtain or to provide this document for sales in invoice or bill of sale the bill of sale should list the seller name buyer name vehicle information and VIN the purchase amount seller passport number buyer passport number and the signature of seller and uh, buyer so these are all the four documents that you need in order to ship a vehicle out of the UAE you need to provide all these uh, copies to the shipping company I'm gonna list all the uh, documents required in the description below so you have it now after it ships and it gets here at it arrives at the um, at the port in the US you would need a declaration form which is the HS dash 7 it's called declaration form you can find it online download it and fill it out Two EPA form which is the 3520-1 and they have different codes under that form in your case if you're shipping uh, a vehicle 25 years old or more you're gonna go with code E this is the one that you want to select code E three you need the 3461 and 7501 form both these would be provided by the shipping agent every shipping company in the UAE has an agent here in the States once the vehicle arrives here they'll do their inspection after that they'll provide a 3461 form and 7501 form these are one for the Homeland Security and the other one is for the US Custom Border Protection. Um, something I forgot to mention is when the shipping company send you an estimate, they're gonna ask you if you want a door-to-door -door shipping or door to port since I live in Georgia in, in Atlanta Georgia and my vehicle was coming to Pensacola in Florida which is five hours away from me I decided to go for the door to port I was planning to have a door to door but then I saw all the, uh, the stories about shipping companies the tra transport companies and the way they they store the vehicles on top of each other and there's a huge chance something is gonna happen or something is gonna de be damaged so I was like I paid all this money and I waited for all for a long time I think it would be ideal to just drive to the port and pick it up from there myself so that's what I did but before you go and pick it up from the uh, from the port if you plan to drive it back home make sure that you have an insurance that's different uh, from the shipping uh, insurance make sure you have insurance here in the states just a vehicle insurance i remember i went with uh, with state farm because they have an option for um, insuring classic vehicles where you can agree on an amount on a dollar value if something would have to happen in case of a total loss you can have agreed value so they don't go by the market value so that's what I did with them your premium is gonna be is going to be a little bit higher but that's just for the peace of mind something I should have mentioned at the beginning 
and you're probably familiar with that they have different types of shipping they have the roro shipping which is roll on roll off this is usually the cheaper option and there is container option container is way more expensive i went with the with the roro roll on roll off i hope you find this video helpful i'm gonna mention in the description below pretty much everything i talked about all the documents you need but if you get everything in order it's pretty much a simple uh, process straightforward just you gotta be patient you gotta do your due diligence and good luck